In this one, we are gonna be doing template inheritance, some basic template inheritance. And what that means is we just make our templates more dynamic. So in our views, what we've seen is this thing called return render, and it takes in a request, a template name, and context. Now it does more than just put the context into the template, it actually uses template variables and template blocks and template inheritance to make a more dynamic templating system. So to do this, what we're gonna, we're just gonna convert everything over into this templating system. So if we look at our all of our HTML files, so index, post, as well as post form, um, what we see is a lot of like rep repetitive code that we have on here. Um, especially if we start putting a lot of CSS and JavaScript in there, or we use a framework like Bootstrap, you're gonna start seeing a lot of repetitive code if we put it on each HTML document. This is terrible practice, not just in Django, but in modern programming languages in general, or modern web frameworks in general. You don't wanna repeat yourself over and over and over again. Um, so what we're gonna do is create a new template in here, and we're gonna call it base.html. So base is basically the parent template of every other template that we're gonna be using with. You can have multiple parents. I'll show you what this means in just a second. But really, base is like the core of it. Base is gonna be the main parent that, you, that we will use. And you're gonna see this on other Django third-party projects or other Django projects in general. They'll use base.html instead of index.html. So let's go ahead and copy everything from index.html and we're actually gonna cut it out and paste it into base. And I'm gonna delete index.html completely. So index.html is gone. We no longer have it anymore. All we're gonna be using is base here. And inside of this body, I'm gonna make a new div and I'm gonna call it div class equals to container. I'm just giving it a div class or a name for that div and I'm gonna close it out. Inside of this container, I'm gonna make a new um, template block. So it's gonna be called block content. And then we're gonna put in block content. So these, the curly brackets, percent block content, curly brackets, per, um, excuse me, percent curly bracket. This is opening and closing a block that's gonna be a replaceable block. So we can actually take content out of there and put new content in. You'll see this in action once we actually do the inheritance. So what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna put this original code that we had in there inside of this block content stuff. And now back into our view, wherever we rendered index.html, we're gonna render now base.html. And it's only in one place. So that's the list. So let's go ahead and take a look at the list. And if I refresh in here, nothing has changed. It looks exactly the same. So let's actually go into a new template. So let's say post form. And now instead of having all the doc type stuff, I'm gonna get rid of everything here and say extends base.html. I'll explain what this does in a second. And then I'm gonna get rid of all this other stuff. So now extends base.html is saying like, hey, base.html is gonna be the parent. So in any of the blocks that we put below, those are gonna be replaced with the content that we want, or we're gonna do something with it basically. So extends base.html, if I saved it just like this and I went into uh, post create, let's go ahead and look at it, post create, all it says is, is working, right? So what it's thinking it's doing is it's really just using the base.html and it's not actually changing any of the content. So in order for us to change the content, we have to use those blocks again. So block content and in block content. And if I save that and refresh in that page, the form is now rendered once again. Um, and I can also do block dot super. And what this will do is get the original content that's in the parent class block, which in this case, it just says is working because we don't have the object list. But I could say P equals to parent um, page, parent template, and close that off, refresh in here. And we'll see that we can actually add that sort of content in. Um, that's something you can play around with. But since we have this block, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Since we have this block, we can do it on all of our other HTML types of things. So in this case, we have the parent content for this, but let's do it for the post detail. And more specifically, this messages part. I'm gonna actually cut out the messages here, put it into the base, and I'm gonna put a new div class in here, and I'm gonna call it messages. Close off this div. 
paste in our new messages and I'm gonna cut out the if statement above it. So again, this is in the base.html. So this is the parent for all of our other templates. So now in post detail, all I have is the actual detail that's related to the post. So again, like what we did in post form, I'm gonna go ahead and extends from base.html. And then I'm gonna do block content. And then finally in block content. Now you might see it some places as in block. That's, that's okay. Um, it's completely okay. It's just basically saying in this block. In block content is just a little bit more verbose so you can see what's going on. It's completely up to you on how you wanna do that. Um, some developers say it's best practice to do it that way. Others, myself included, say it's not necessary because you shouldn't have that much content inside of your template anyway to really need in block content. Anyways, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and take a look. And I'm gonna create one, I'll say new item. Here we go, create post, and it says successfully created, awesome. So everything is working exactly the way we want it to. Uh, post form, I'm gonna get rid of that block super there. Um, so now, as we see here, our HTML stuff is, is very, very basic. So let's, let's, let's make it a little bit better. I'm gonna go into our base.html again, and I'm gonna put in inside of the head document, I'm gonna put in, or the head aspect of the HTML document, I'm gonna put in a title tag here and say, try Django 1.9, and we'll close this out. But I'm also gonna put this into block head. And in block, actually we should call it head underscore title, so block head title in block. So now that I've got this, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this right here. I'm gonna save it and let's go ahead and see what the title does anyway. So what that does is it changes the tab title. It just changes what that looks like. But if I copy this and bring it into our block post detail, I can actually use head title. I can first off say instance the title, and then I can put a slash and then do block super. So what that does for us is it shows us the title of the item or the article and then where it is, which is try Django 1.9. Um, so that's some of the dynamicness of how this can happen. Now you can do this with styles as well. It doesn't have to just be something like title, but uh, there's a few things that you might wanna note here. Number one, the, the first thing is anything outside of these blocks will not be rendered. So if I said H1 high there above the block content or the inheriting block, we are not gonna see it. So if I refresh, it doesn't show up. As soon as I put it in the block, it will show up. Perfect. So another thing, like I said, is you could do CSS. So if I came in here and did a style tag and closed off that style tag and then just added block style, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste here. So style and then the in block. I could literally copy this whole thing, including the HTML style tags. Again, those won't be rendered because they're outside of a block, but it's good for code completion um, inside of Sublime Text. So H1, and I say color equals to, let's say like 777, right? And I refresh in here, and now it gives me a new color. So those blocks are very dynamic and really, really good. Cool. So. Um, that's all we're gonna do on template inheritance. There's definitely a lot of other things that you could do with template inheritance that we're just not getting into. But the big thing here is we now only have one HTML document that really handles everything. Um, and what we also have is a way to display our messages and, and one location for um, pretty much anything that would be related to the documentation. There is one more thing that I wanna do and that is adding in post underscore list.html and putting this inside of there. So this block this, this block content that we had, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and just separate that out. So it extends base.html, save that. And now I'm gonna get rid of all this. So basically our main content container is now very clean. It doesn't have a whole lot of stuff in there. 
uh, messages that that one is not necessarily as clean but it it still looks pretty good um, I will do one more thing to clean up messages as well actually and we're gonna come back into our post list and we're gonna call this post underscore list.html now so if I go back into my post that shows up fine the last thing is something that's really cool about templates as well is you can use something called include so I'm gonna make a new file in here and I'll call this messages um, display dot HTML and I'm gonna come back into my base and I'm gonna cut out this entire if message statement and paste it into messages dot display and now inside of this base dot HTML I can go include messages underscore display dot HTML save that and I refresh and now if I go ahead and create another one it says not successfully created I'll say hello there new content post now successfully created cool so that means the message is there and as you see our base HTML template is actually really clean if I get rid of all the extra spacing um, we only see really only see 15 lines of code here but it renders out to being a lot more depending on where it is so if we look at our view page source we see that it, it does include all that HTML stuff every single time which is something you definitely need uh, the last thing that I actually want to get rid of is this not successfully created if valid statement. So there we go. Cool. So now when we go to create something, it's not going to give us a message right off the bat. All right. So that's it for our templates. We're not going to come back to it. Um, again, the things that we did here are pretty cool. Um, there's definitely a lot more that you can do, like I said. Um, and that's where you'd want to take one of our other classes where we go into a lot more depth, such as the digital market. We go into a lot more depth there um, to actually build full projects using these templates and just making them better. So uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.